Let's start off with there is a 100% rating where you're fighting the combined ratings table and you get to 100% the hard way. That's one way to do it, right? So 70 plus 150,000 plus 30 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 30 plus 40, that equals 100. That's called the hard way. There's a 100% scheduler rating the hard way. And then you could also get 100% P&T the hard way. TDIU or individual unemployability is the other way you can go. If your disabilities prevent you from working, you may have a rating of 70, 80, or 90%, but you can file a TDIU claim and win it, and then you also get paid at the 100% rate. And there's two options there. There's a 100% scheduler TDIU, and then there's a 100% scheduler TDIU permanent and total. So you can get permanent and total uh, in both circumstances, and the benefits are exactly the same. There's no difference um, when you're on TDIU. Same exact benefits. The reason why the benefits are exactly the same is because you're at 100%. So you're either 100% or 100% P&T. Whatever it is, you get those benefits. P&T obviously has more benefits. And to get P&T status, just to kind of stop on this for a second, it depends on the likelihood of your disabilities improving at some point in the future for the rest of your life. So you're 35 and you have this, this, and this, and you got 100%, but you didn't get P&T, you need to FOIA request your VA claims file, look at your rating code sheet, and see which of your disabilities are considered to be not static. Static is the verbiage you're looking for. So, okay, that one's static, 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 static. Oh, that one says routine future exam. That's the one that's holding you up. That's the one you need to focus on. You need to change the VA's mind on that particular one to get P&T status. But this is about VA individual unemployability, not so much about P&T. So um, I digress. As there's no difference in the benefits between 100% the hard way and 100% individual unemployability, the qualifications are different. The main two differences are exactly how you qualify and then income restrictions. We're going to talk about income restrictions later in the video, but I just kind of want to just hop in here. And this is kind of what makes TDIU uncool or something, you know, like, uh, I, everybody else has 100% P&T the hard way, and I just got this shitty TDIU. Well, if you're 100% TDIU p and you get the exact same benefits I do. As far as work restrictions go, get a little job that makes under the uh, poverty level. You know, it's like 14 grand. There's two ways you can get VA individual unemployability. One's called scheduler, one's called extra scheduler. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be talking about scheduler. So it could be found in 38 CFR 4.16a, and then 4.16b is extra scheduler. But again, look at my playlist, wherever I'm going to put the little I or in the description or whatever. And uh, we're going to do a separate video just on extra scheduler. Because believe it or not, you can win those with a vocational expert pretty easily too. All right, so 4.16a says this. You have one disability rated at 60% or you have two or more disabilities that add up to 70% using the combined ratings table, and then one of them needs to be at least 40. So if I'm using some of my ratings, I have 70% for mental health. That alone is one over 60%. So if you have a mental health rating at 70%, this one's for you. I also have one rating for chronic fatigue syndrome at 60%. If you also have a 60% rating for chronic fatigue syndrome or whatever, you qualify for TDIU, scheduler route. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future videos on VA individual unemployability because I'm going deep, deep in the weeds. The key to winning a TDIU claim is a vocational assessment. It's done by a vocational expert. I have a copy of a really good one in my boot camp, and I'm going to post it for all my boot campers. 
Sign up at CombatCraig.com. If you're working, then you most likely won't meet the rating criteria for VA individual unemployability. It's because you can't work. So if you're working, I mean, there's exceptions like sheltered work environments, protected work environments, and the poverty line. Again, I'm going to go into each three of those in depth in a different video. But basically, if you're making 50 grand a year and you're working, you're not going to qualify for TDIU until you get fired. Now, if you are about to get fired, um, that, this might be for you, right? Um, if you're retired, this is another one. It doesn't have an age limit on it. You could be 22 or 21 or however young you could be when you get out of the military. I don't know, 18, 19, till whatever, 90s, 100s. So if you're a retiree, you know, I'm talking to you, Vietnam veterans. If you're 65, 70, 75, 80, whatever, and you've been retired for 12 years, you qualify for TDIU. They cannot use the fact that you're retired against you. The criteria is, are you able to work? No. Yeah, but I retired. Yeah, you leave that part out. That's that's not part of it. This is uh, There's been some discussion about this, but this is not one of the proposed changes. They're, they're not going to be messing around with this for a long time. So if you're over 65 or whatever, retired, um, check this out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy for you retirees. So I mentioned three things that sold me on VA individual employability over the last couple of weeks. So let's go into them. And the first one's pretty straightforward. It's the fact that the VA is tinkering around with the rating criteria, and they're going to make it hard. They're called proposed changes, and they have some things that are obviously bad, like tinnitus and sleep apnea, and then they have some other things that look better, like mental health. But I'm telling you, when the VA makes changes, they don't make changes to benefit veterans. They're going to make it harder to get into the hundo club. So that's my first reason. My second reason is the vocational experts going to review all of your current medical evidence so you don't need any more medical evidence. This is huge. You don't need a nexus from this guy and a diagnosis from that guy. The vocational expert is key. I read a vocational uh, assessment, and I'm going to go over parts of this with you, and I'm going to show you why this is so huge. He's going to go into your existing medical evidence, and he's going to turn around the VA's words and use them against them. It's fucking brilliant. I should have been on this TDIU thing a lot heavier, but I'm on it now. Now I've seen a vocational assessment. You're going to love this. So the guy's going to go through and explain the different levels of sedentary work and why your disabilities prevent you from doing them. You got 10% on your ankle, 70% for PTSD, you know, why this doesn't work, why that doesn't work. He's going to explain your work history, your education, and how that has not prepared you to make money because of all your service-connected disabilities. That's the first part he's going to focus on. He's going to look up your career, and he's going to explain what duties, you know, truck driver, U.S. Labor Code 57, whatever it is, right? And he's going to explain, like, you got to wake up and get out of bed and go take a shower and bathe yourself and then go road rage your way to work, hop in a truck, and road rage the whole time. And he's going to explain how that is not a good fit. It's pretty dumb for any company to put you in a truck if you can't even be around people and you have road rage. He's going to explain that your uncontrollable fits of rage and anger is going to get you arrested at work and possibly another employee assaulted. Right? Think about that. You have anger issues you're diagnosed by the VA with PTSD. There's anger management courses you went through. I went through all that shit. And it's like, it is stupid to hire Combat Craig and put him into a, uh, put him into a work environment. He's gotten fired from every job. He argues with everybody. And he tells people to fuck off all day long. Like, that is this guy putting this guy in a work environment is literally taking a ticking time bomb and dropping it in your workforce. He's going to go fucking nuts on your employees. Don't do that. Do not hire combat Craig, right? So he's going to explain 
how your road rage and your mental health and your being in pain all the time and your paranoia and your hypervigilance and how none of that shit is compatible with any work environment. And then he's going to explain why it would be really stupid for any employer to actually hire you to do that job because they're opening themselves up to a lawsuit. And you can kind of think about it like this. And this is what needs to be explained because your doctor doesn't explain it. That's why a vocational expert is so key. He's just going to go in and pick apart and focus on all your um, disabilities. You know, this guy does this. He's assaulted people and got away with it or assaulted people and got arrested. So he's known for anger issues and assaulting people and all that kind of stuff. If this guy goes into any actual workplace... Like, you're setting yourself up for a lawsuit. This guy has a history of criminality and violence, and you're inviting that in, hoping that's not going to happen. I'm telling you right now, that's exactly what's going to happen. So that's kind of the argument around your incompatibility um, issues uh, being in a workplace. Then he's going to do my favorite part of the vocational assessment here, and he's going to use the VA's own words against them. Every doctor report where a VA doctor admitted you had any level of occupational impairment, whew, he's going to focus right in on that. He's going to add it to the list. Every CNP examiner that admitted that you had any level of occupational impairment on the list. Every VA decision letter, rating decision, where a VA rater looked at the medical evidence, you know, from VA doctors and CNP examiners, and he rated you based on your level of occupational impairment on the list. So basically what you're going to end up here is the VA and your private medical evidence is going to end up on the list as well. But he's going to go through and be like, your doctor, you know, four years ago said this guy has occupational impairment. Your VA rater says occupational impairment three months ago. And then your three CNP exams... As they lowballed the guy, and so did the raider, they all admitted that this guy has various degrees of occupational impairment. He's going to laser focus in on that, and he's going to literally use the VA's words against them. I love this stuff. And the best part is, this is the best part. Nobody will rebut him. The VA does not have a mechanism in place for a vocational assessment and a vocational expert. It's not voc rehab. That's completely different. That's a different clown show, different program. I'm not even going to make videos about that, but I don't know. Maybe I will. They do not have a vocational expert. The mechanism is you show up with uh, no diagnosis or no symptoms or no nexus, and they deny you, and you file a supplemental, and you get some private medical evidence. They send you to another CNP exam, and they just dick around with you. A VA rater cannot send you to a CNP exam after you show up with a, a vocational assessment report because it's the same VA rater that already said you had all sorts of occupational problems. And they're going to send you back to QTC, LHI, or VES, who also admitted that you had all these problems. So there is no way to rebut a well-thought-out uh, vocational assessment, especially when you're using the VA's own words against them. This is money. So then after he goes on for about 15 pages outlining every time the VA said you had an occupational problem, he's going to render a professional opinion because he's a vocational expert and he's qualified to re render a professional opinion. The VA cannot push back because they don't have somebody to rebut his professional opinion. They just don't have it. The third one that really has my mind um, changed a lot about TDIU claims is my friend that's a VA rater. On the job for over 10 years, I asked him what happens when they get vocational assessments, and he said he's never got one. In 10 years of adjudicating TDIU claims, he has never had a vocational assessment attached to a TDIU claim because people don't know about it. It's kind of like a secret. It costs money for sure. It's an expert opinion for sure. Um, but he's like, yeah, most of the time we do the 8940 and we try to get a hold of old employers and look at buddy letters, which are not any of that shit isn't vocational, hardcore vocational evidence. And then they just kind of like figure it out and try to form an opinion. He's like, I have never had a vocational assessment attached to a TDIU claim. Not once in 10 years. 
All right, let's talk about finding a vocational expert that can do this kind of work for you. They need to be accredited, and it's usually with one of the big accredited companies. Uh, one of them is the American Board of Vocational Experts. That one holds an acronym, ABVE, Alpha, Bravo, Victor, Echo is one of them. But there's other agencies like this. Look for vocational expert. Call them and see if they're qualified to give opinions and testimony. And there is testimony, not in a VA claim, but they do get called into court, especially in a workers' comp claim. So they're actually that competent. If called, they could go stand up behind their uh, vocational opinion and argue it. You don't have to do that with the VA because it doesn't even get rebutted. I'm telling you, it's money. So Google vocational expert near me, find one that's qualified, and you'll actually find one near you. Veterans vocational expert, workers comp vocational expert, social security disability vocational expert. Near me, you're going to get hits. These guys don't have to conform to any weird statements either. That's, the, that's another thing. <laughs> the money just keeps on rolling. They don't have to fill out DBQs. They don't have to say goofy shit like at least as likely as not. They render their vocational assessment just like they do for social security disability claim and a workers comp claim. So no DBQs, no VA forms. They could write it in whatever format they want. TDIU claims. You might want to lawyer up. Hill and Ponton is the sponsor of this video. They specialize in TDIU claims because they're good at them and they're easy to win when you know what you're doing. Another option is just go find a vocational expert yourself and do it yourself. So you can lawyer up or you could do it yourself. Either way is fine. I'm giving you options. Like I said, I'm gonna dive into this thing quite a bit deeper because VA individual unemployability was designed by the VA to pay veterans at the 100% rate if they cannot get there using the combined ratings table. That's why this exists in the first place. So it is the law and that's what this is for. A vocational expert is the key to this, so stay tuned to this channel because this is an introduction to VA unemployability, aka TDIU, aka IU, and I'm going to be going really deep into the weeds in the future, and I'm going to put them all on a playlist. Links in the description to that playlist. There's a little I thing here, and I'll see you in the next video.